Good afternoon once again and welcome to another class. Today we are going to talk about how you can create a email within five to 10 minutes, maximum. I just want to take my time and take you through, at least so that the weaker student can understand and also appreciate it. As I've already shared my screen with you, you can see that, you can see my screen. But before you can create an email, the most important thing is you must have uh, as, as the application software that you can use to access the internet. That is after having the internet on your machine, you must have an application software or a, 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 called, a popular known as browser that you can use. So the browsers or the software that we use to access the internet is called a browser. And the, the most popular ones are the Firefox, the Google browser, the Internet Explorer, the Mozilla uh, Firefox, the Opera, the are examples of Microsoft Edge, the are examples of uh, web browser that you can use. I have the, Go uh, the Google Chrome, so I'm going to launch it. Launching application simply, simply means open it. So once I have it on my desktop, this is the icon on my desktop, as you can see, I'm moving that or I'm dragging it on my screen or on my desktop. I have to double click it. If you double click it to open, or I can right click and a menu will pop out and I select open. Or I can select or I can click on it and press the enter key on the keyboard it to open. So this is my web browser it has open. And as you can see, these are some websites that's at <laughs> Uh, me as a user, I've been visiting. This website or these uh, links will be different from your machine because for me, these are most of the sites that I've been used, the most frequently sites that I normally visit. So because we are going to uh, create, uh, the first thing is we are going to create a Gmail email address or a, a email address from by Gmail. We will go to Google. So the assumption is you don't even know where the the website of Gmail is. So you go to Google, you click on Google, and it will take you there. Then you type as we did in our previous slides or our previous lecture. You don't know where the website is, so you type it. So Gmail, I'm typing Gmail, G M E I L, Gmail. Once you type Gmail and press enter on your keyboard, it will take you, or Google will give you uh, some. Uh, uh, options to choose from. I think my internet or my Gmail is not working. Oh, yes, it has come. Thank you. So this is my Gmail. As you can see, you can sign in. That is Google account. Create a Gmail account. Sign into Gmail and what have you. So you can sign in. Or uh, there is difference between sign in and sign up. Sign in is you already have the email address and you want to log in or you want to sign or you want to open. But the sign up is where you don't have it and you are creating it for the first time. So that is sign up. Know the difference between sign in and sign up. The sign in is also equal to log in. And sign up is also equal to log up. Log in, so you are logging in. So I'm going to sign in, uh, sorry, I, I don't have it. So I'm going to sign in or sign up sign up a Gmail account so you can type sign up on, on your Google uh, search engine, using the Google search engine. So see you create uh, your Gmail account. And so I'm going to create a Gmail account. So uh, you, you click on that. So once we click on that, this is the, this is the screen that you see. So create your Google account. So the first one is your first name. So for me, I want to create a, let's assume that I already uh, I have already used Peter Pia Henne for to create one. So I'm going to use my lovely daughter's uh, name that is Mercedes. So her first name is Mercedes. And the last name is Apia Henne. So that is Mercedes Apia Henne. Then you have to enter the, the name that you want to use. So I want to create you like a username, what you want. You can use your nickname or you can combine some characters of your name, maybe your first name plus your date of birth 
or your year of birth or maybe anything. So I want to make it Mercedes, uh, Mercedes APP or Mercedes AP, APP. The user and our mistake, meaning someone is already using the Mercedes APP. So I'll make it, let me make it Mercedes. It means someone is still using it. So once you see that red sign, you see something like this username isn't allowed. That is, it means someone is already using it. You see that the system is giving me some options. It's giving me a, an option, appear Mercedes or Mercedes appear or Mercedes app to to uh, to uh, These are some of it. Means it's available. So let me use Mercedes appear here. So this is Mercedes appear. So I have created a Gmail using my first name. I've entered my first name, my last name, and uh, the username that I have choose. So meaning I have combined my first uh, the first name and the second name, giving me Mercedes appear here as the username. Then you have to create a password. The password is basically a combination of characters. It should it's supposed to be something uh, confidential to you, just like your uh, ATM number, like your ATM pin number. So you can choose any password that you want to you want to use, but make sure your password is strong. You can combine it with names, characters, uh, alphanumeric, and the rest. But please, it is not advisable to use your name or your nickname as a password. It's not advisable to use your name or your nickname as a password. So, for example, I want to use a password called, uh, I want to create my own password. So this is the password. Once you type the password for the first time, the system will ask you to confirm it. It's, it will compare the two characters that you have signed or you have entered. Please, with respect to password, uh, space is also considered as character. If you remember in my previous lecture, I mentioned that characters, with respect to computer characters, space bar is also considered as a character. So whenever you are creating a password, you can make provision for that also. Don't say that. So when I finish, I'll click next. If there are issues with the information that I have entered, the system will signal me. So you see, it's asking me to verify my, my password. This is another stage. It's to verify the email that I'm creating using my phone number. So you can, you can use your phone number also uh, to also verify it. So my phone number, let me use this. You have Ghana flag, it means that it's giving you the Ghana code, like plus two, three, you see all, all the other countries. So because you're in Ghana, you select Ghana. Uh -huh. So uh, let me use this number. So this is the phone number that I've entered. So from that, I'll move on to next. Gmail or Google will send me a verification code on my phone. That is why I said it's one of the uh, uh, CFS or the distance to send me a Gmail, a code on my phone to enter, uh, to send me a code on my phone. As you can see, as you can see, if so you see you receive a mail uh, distance. So I have received a code called 50 on my phone, 5050. So this is the code that I have received on my phone. Then I'll, I'll click verify. It will verify whether the code I've, I have entered is correct or is not. So it's asking me for the phone number again. Uh, I think there are some Issues I still have to correct. Okay, next. Okay. You can also tell them to call you. They will call you and mention the numbers to you. When you click on call instead, instead of testing your message, it will still it will also call you. So that is what I'm used, I'm doing now. So uh, five five. Zero five zero four three. Verify. 
wrong code. Okay. Uh, I can I can say resend it again, or I can say uh, call instead. So let me see if they will call me. But the most important thing, when they call you and you pick, pick take a pen and a paper, and I mean, you take a pen and a paper, yes, you can see they are calling me. You take a pen and a paper, and when you pick it, they will mention it, and then you write it down. Hello? Mm -hmm. Okay. Nine, six, eight, five, eight, one. Mm -hmm. Nine, six, eight, five, eight, one. Thank you. So they called me and they have given me my uh, code nine, six, eight, five, eight, one. When I finish, I'll click on verify. Yes, the system has verified me. So you can have, well, you have what you call the recovery email address. If you have another email address, you can enter so that in case you, 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 you forget about your email address, username, or the password, the system can help you. But I don't want to, so here you are supposed to enter your date of birth. So let's assume that my date of birth is 6 March. So March 6. 1957. I grow small. My gender, female, male, rather not say or custom. So my I use it, I'm using my daughter's name. So female. Then you go to next. So you can it's the the, the email is almost that you can skip it or yes, I'm in. So you can say okay, yes, I'm in. Okay, let's skip it. Yes, I agree. You have to agree. So I have agree with this. Yes, so I have created my email, my Gmail called Mercedes Appear Hene. And this is this is my page, uh, my Gmail. I'm, I'm going into the Gmail. That is Mercedes Appear Hene. So I'm moving into the it's loading my my Gmail. So this is it. So this is my my email address, you see, and now I'm going to take you through. So I've created the email address. When you go here, you see the details about the email. Here you see, when you click M, you will see M here because the first name that I use is Mercedes. So start with Mercedes. So as you can see here, this is the email address or the username Mercedes at gmail.com. And you have compose, inbox. If someone send you a message and you want to view, you see the inbox. It's just like what you have on your phone, inbox the scent, the draft, the snooze, the, uh, you can look at more important chat, or email spam, trash, and other things. So this is my email address. If I want to send someone a mail, you go to compose, like your phone. So I want I want to send a mail, so I, I'll click on here. Here, this is the compose. When you click on compose, to give you option. So this is the compose, please. If you want to send someone email, you type the person's email address. You must know the person's email address. So for example, I'm going to send a mail to uh, from to Peter dot appearhene at uenr dot edu dot ga. So this is the email address that I'm sending to. This is the email address that I'm sending the, the, the email to. And the subject may be, uh, I'm sending assignment. The subject is what, like the, the, the title of whatever you are sending to. So that when the person see it, you know that, oh, this is the message. If it is an invitation, let us say invitation. If it's greetings, it is greeting. If it is a vast day message that you want to wish the person, you can do that. 
So this is the title or the subject varies from one person to depending on what you want to do. So assignment, maybe, please. Uh, so you go into the, uh, the mail, the place that you are supposed to type something. You type, please, sir. This is your student with index number. Then you indicate your index number. Maybe your index number is UEB1111. Uh, UEB1111. This is your index number. This is your student with index number, so so and so. And my, this is your student. I'm sending you this mail to submit my assignment. Thank you. Because you are sending an assignment to your lecturer, it should be official. You don't have to use those short, 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 shortcut words. So maybe the assignment is on your computer, you want to attach it. So if you want to attach a document, this, uh, you see the resend here, this after you have finished with everything you want to send, you click on this one, send. This one is, this one is the formatting option. When we move to Microsoft Word and we are doing Word, I will take you to how to do formatting. But our emphasis here is how to send a mail using an attachment. So you see something like an office pin, attach files. When you click on it, it will ask you or it will lead you to, or to give you the opportunity to attach the file. So once I click on it, you see, I click on that attach file pin. I click on it. It has opened it. It has opened it. Let me redo it again so that you can appreciate it. Uh, I, I'm going to click on it again. So I had this window after clicking the attach file pin. So maybe the document that I want to attach, that the assignment is on, or is on my desktop. So this is my computer. So if it's on the desktop, you click on desktop. If it's on a pen drive, you go to my computer, then you select pen drive. So you must know the location of the document that you are attaching. So for example, for me, the document is on my desktops. And if the document is a Word document, for example, virtualization in cloud computing, this is the document I want to uh, attach or send, or this is the, the title of my assignment. So you select one. If this is one, the one that you will send, so you select the one. If there are more, you can select more than one. but because I want to select this one, the one I'll click on virtualization in cloud. So the, exam, uh, the assumption is the file name that I'm sending as an attach as an assignment is virtualization in cloud computing. So you click on that, you click on open or enter. So this the document has been attached. So this is the document. It has been attached as you can see. The size is even 23k. Let me redo it again. If you want to attach a document in your mail, you go to this pin, attach file, the office pin uh, uh, icon. You click on it. You click on it. When you click on it, it will open this window for you. Then you must locate. If the document is on your document folder, you go there. So you must know where the document is placed. So for security reasons, or it's always advisable to put the document on a location that you can easily trace, especially the desktop. So if the document is my, on my desktop, I'll click on the desktop. So these are the files on the, the, the various documents on my desktop. So for example, I'm using this document as an example. So I'm going to attach this document, click virtualization in cloud computing. So I'll click on that, click open. You see it's attaching. So it has finished attach. When you see that the blue, then has finished, uh, has finished loading it. It has finished attaching. So this is my document. I have attached it and I'm sending it to my lecturer. So I'll click after everything, after I'm sure that everything's okay, the email address is also okay. That's the recipient email address is okay. The title, everything is okay. You click on send. You see I send in here. So sent, you see message sent, message, message sent. So I have, send this document. When, it, when I want to confirm whether the message that I've sent has gone to the recipient, I can go to sent. When you go to sent, you see that it will show you some of the document that you have sent. So you see recently, I've just sent this a, 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 a document to my lecturer, so sent. Now let's look at the difference between CC and BCC. CC, CC means carbon copy. 
and BC, BCC mean blind carbon copy. When you want to send a document, or you want to send a mail to maybe appear here, and I want another person, or you want uh, Mr. Apiahene's TA to have, to also see the document, or to also have a copy of the document, I will see carbon copy. So maybe Mr. Apiahene's TA email address is MIT2012 ff2 at gmail.com. So it means that whatever I'm sending, Mr. Apiahene's TA will also get a copy, carbon copy, or a copy of whatever I'm sending. So I will add it. So this is this is it. But when I choose blind carbon copy, when I choose blind copy, when I when I choose carbon copy, and I send them to Mr. to Mr. PNST, meaning I'm copying Mr. PNST, Mr. PNST will know that the document that I sent, and he has received a copy. Mr. Pen was the original recipient. So the the one receiving the bank uh, the carbon copy will know the other recipient of the same document or the same information. But when you choose blind carbon copy, the blind carbon copy, with respect to blind carbon copy, all the other recipients will not know those who have also received it. So if you want to send a document to so many people or a message you see email and you, to so many people with concentration on the main recipient without allowing the other recipient to know that others are, have also received the same message, you have to use the blind carbon copy. So that's the difference between carbon copy and blind carbon. So if I want to click on blind carbon copy, I can type maybe uh, Peter, blah, 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 blah. So the one, all those email address that will fall under the blind carbon copy will, not, will never see or will never know that you have copied these people or you have sent the same document to these people. So this brings us to the end of our uh, video on how to create a Gmail and also have to create a, a, a message and attach a document. In our next lecture or in our next video, we will look at how to download a, 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 an attachment from your email. Thank you. Watch the video and share, like my YouTube channel.